Okay, class, today we're going to be looking at activity-based costing. Um, we call this ABC, activity-based costing. In our previous video, we looked at um, calculating a predetermined overhead rate. This was the traditional approach, or the plant-wide approach, where we get one single rate. Okay, so we, to get this predetermined overhead rate, we took our estimated overhead, we estimated what our overhead would be for the year or the time period, and divided it by the estimated activity base activity for that same time period. So for example, let's say that our estimated overhead is $30,000 for this time period. Let me put a dollar sign there. And let's say that our activity base is gonna be labor hours. How many hours our laborers are physically working on the product? And let's say there are, we estimate there's gonna be 5,000 labor hours in this, this time period. Well, we'll take the 30,000 divided by the 5,000 labor hours, or we'll get a rate of $6 per labor hour. Okay, so every time that somebody works an hour on a job, we'll allocate $6 of overhead to that job. Okay, so if they work three hours on a job, $18 of overhead will be allocated to the job, along with the labor rate and the materials. Okay, um, now the traditional approach usually is just one rate for the whole company. Uh, some textbooks though, they talk about um, department rates, so each department could actually do their own single rate, so there could be an assembly department, and the assembly may have their own overhead and they could calculate a rate just for that department, um, and then maybe machining might have a different uh, rate, okay, but it would still be a single rate for each department separately, okay, but typically what we have is just one single rate for the whole company when we use the traditional approach, just one single rate, versus activity-based costing. Activity-based costing, we're gonna have multiple rates. So what we do is we take this overhead right here and we're gonna divide it into different pools, okay? Different um, groupings of costs. So let's just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give an example here. Let's say we have a janitorial area. Uh, we have a machining rate and we're gonna have an assembly assembly rate. Okay, so let's say that this 30000 is broken out this way. Janitor janitorial type costs are $10,000. Machining costs are $5,000. And our assembly overhead costs, okay, these are all over estimated overhead costs. So we're doing the same formula here, we're just doing it multiple times. Okay, we're going to take this 30000 and break it down between 10, 5, and 15. So we looked at the individual costs and this is where they fell. Now, janitorial, uh, let's say that the best way to allocate janitorial services is based off of square footage. And let's say that there's 20,000 square feet in this plant, okay? So each area then gets allocated overhead for janitorial services based off of how many square feet they're using in the plant, okay? So $10,000 divided by 20,000 square feet gets us a rate of 50 cents per square foot, okay? Machining, let's assume that there are, there are gonna be 5,000 machine hours, okay? So the machines are gonna be, we estimate they're gonna run for 5,000 hours. So every time a machine runs, a dollar per hour will be allocated to that job, okay? And assembly, uh, let's assume the assembly, uh, we'll use 5,000 labor hours, okay? They're not the same. These, are, these machining hours and labor hours are different. I'm just using the same dollar amount, though, okay? So this gets us $3. Every time somebody works an hour in the assembly area, $3 of overhead will be allocated uh, to, to uh, that job, all right? So now this 5,000 labor hours is the same that's where I got this 5,000 5, labor hours over here, okay? Now, notice, we have one right here, okay, for the traditional approach. The activity-based approach, we have multiple rates. I show three rates, there could be more than three rates. There could be four rates, five rates, however many rates you want to use to allocate overhead. Typically, the more rates you have, the better you are at allocating those costs correctly to each job. Okay? because you're being more specific on how you want to allocate them. Okay? The advantage is that you're going to be more accurate. The disadvantage is that it's a little bit harder, I mean, because you're doing multiple rates. 
you would not do this way and this way, right? Okay, just making sure you understand that. Um, companies either use the traditional approach or the single rate approach, okay, or the plant rate approach, or you use the activity-based costing approach, which is gonna be more accurate, okay? So let's just do, let's continue on with this example here. Let's say that we have job number, um, we're just gonna make this up, job number 457. And let's say that they have a thousand square feet. So this job is using a thousand square feet area. Um, let's say they have 500 machine hours. And let's say they have 400 labor hours. Okay, so this is what's taking place here. So every square foot gets 50 cents. So we're going to take 1,000 times 50 cents, which gives us obviously $500. And then for the machine hours, each machine hour gets allocated $1 of overhead. So that's another 500. So the 500. Uh, machine hours times the dollar rate and now for the assembly we're going to take 400 labor hours times three dollars which equals twelve hundred dollars so that gets us two thousand two hundred dollars of overhead this is how much overhead will go into job 457 okay and then plus we'll we'll calculate the labor rate, so there will also be labor and materials that go into job 457. But this is how much overhead we're going to allocate to this job. Okay? If this company wasn't using activity-based costing and instead was using the traditional approach, they would use, uh, I told you before that our activity base on this one was uh, labor hours. So there were 400 labor hours times the rate of $6, which gets us $2,400, okay? So under this approach, they'd be allocated more overhead, okay? Um, this one generally is gonna be more accurate because we're breaking down our overhead into more specific pools and allocating it on a better cost driver, whatever's driving this, and better activity base uh, than just one huge uh, pot of money. We're using several separate activity bases that are used, that are better, useful in allocating the overhead in that area, okay? Uh, all right, class, um, I think that's it. Uh, you'll probably need to watch this video a couple times. Um, it's not hard stuff, it's actually pretty easy stuff, uh, but students do get a little bit confused between activity-based costing and traditional approach. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, just keep uh, reviewing this in the chapter and the video and you should get it pretty quickly. Thank you.